The third studio album for one of country music's breakthrough artists, Sturgill Simpson, is another critically acclaimed release and further emphasis on Simpson as a bright prospect for the future of country music. This being my first exposure to a Sturgill Simpson album and knowing of the praise he's received from previous projects fills me with high hopes for a good album, and that's exactly what I get and more. The album's title, A Sailor's Guide to Earth, has this underlying theme of a sailor travelling the world, tying it in with the prospect of leaving behind his family, in particular his young son, and Sturgill links this in with his own travels, touring and performing and having to leave behind his son in the process. It's a rather touching and sentimental album with plenty of emotional resonance and lyrically it's not only packed with realism but has plenty of relatability as well. Opening up on the track Welcome to Earth, Pollywog, where Sturgill is addressing his son and notes that the knowledge that he has to go away makes him sad, not only to leave him behind but also noting the things that he's going to miss like watching him grow up and simply holding him in his arms. Knowing that he may not be seeing his son for a while, Sturgill feels compelled to impart his own wisdom and advice onto his son on the track Keep It Between the Lines. A highly charming track where Sturgill is telling his son to keep his nose clean when he gets older, stay away from drugs, stay in school, don't associate with those who'll get him into trouble, and quote, keep between the lines and not stray. Sturgill also hints at things he did during his younger years that he's not particularly proud of and urges his son not to repeat these mistakes and should he mess things up along the way to simply learn from these mistakes and become a better person because of it. Sturgill also mentions his wife on the track Oh Sarah, mentioning his doubts over his commitment issues, with his wife-to-be laying everything down, telling him to either spill his true feelings otherwise she leaves him and he continues his life without her. Continuing in the second verse where he tells her that even in times when he's on tour or he may seem a little crazy, that he'll not only return to her but that it's her presence and love that makes him whole. The metaphorical use of the sailor's life can be found on the track Breakers Roar, comparing life at sea to touring. At one moment the calm seas seem enticing but within a matter of seconds everything can turn in an instant. The track Sea Stories which paints this picture of a young infantryman in the navy travelling on the seas and venturing to multiple Asian countries and cities, his experiences moulding him into the person he is today. A possible reference to Sturgill himself, who at one point spent time in the Navy, and notes that he has many stories to tell his son, all of which he states are true. And while there were many high points, Sturgill ends the track with a rather morbid and poignant line. After highlighting that he got himself kicked out deliberately, a moment he's not particularly proud of, he's happy he got out before he ended up dying, taking a stab at the then Bush administration that sent troops to fight. The track All Around You compares a sailor being lost at sea and possibly never to be found, to being kicked by life and facing hardships and offers an encouraging word to keep striving no matter what, the song again hinting as a message to Sturgill's son. The second verse highlighting that even in death, his spirit will be there to help him along the way and that nothing will ever break the bonds the two have with each other. The theme of war ends the album. The song Call to Arms, potentially an anti-war track, questioning how many more people are going to die as a result of all these wars and the hope that his son doesn't grow up to become a quote puppet, being made to dress a certain way and being made to kill others at the risk of dying himself. The song Brace for Impact, Live a Little is where Sturgill takes on mortality and tells the listener to embrace life, experience every single thing that they can and to give something back in the process, highlighting that everyone embraces death in a different fashion and kind of invites the listener to decide on the emotional fashion in how they are going to go. One of the more unexpected tracks comes in the middle of the album in the form of In Bloom, a cover of the Nirvana song from the iconic 1991 album Nevermind. Sturgill going on to state in interviews that he wants the song that represents presented the awkward face of a teenage male's life and for Sturgill growing up, this is the track that best represents these feelings. Instrumentally, Sturgill doesn't stray away from his country music roots but also isn't afraid to go into uncharted waters, pardon the pun. The opening track Welcome to Earth Pollywalk starts off on sounds of overlapping waves before opening up with a pretty piano melody, subtle hints of bright guitar chords, pretty string arrangement, timpani drums and lastly introducing a slide guitar, the only thing that sounds remotely country on this track. A string arrangement opens up Breaker's Roar before picked guitar guitar strings come into play with the just audible bass notes. Again, without the slide guitar lingering in the background, it wouldn't have that country flavour. Keep It Between the Lines introduces a more energetic vibe with the fuzzy horn section which provides a nice groove and an electronic and organic piano. I particularly like the electric guitar solo in the middle of the song. Everything feels so bright and warm, one of the best instrumentals on the album. On the song Sea Stories, everything feels so placed. Nothing is overplayed and it all fits very well. The electric guitar could have had a little more prominence in the verses I think, but I do enjoy the tonal shift in the short instrumental break going from somewhat muted to having a much fuller sound towards the end. Immediately at the end of that track we go into it in bloom. Along with the slide guitar we have a very beautifully played bass guitar providing a constant melody throughout. It's kind of a shame the added strings do overshadow the bass in the chorus but despite that it's another strong instrumentation, particularly the lush string arrangement. Brace for impact live a little keeps the constant bass alive along with keyboard organ, fuzzy guitars and horns and the added vocal harmony scattered at moments add a nice 
even touch, as does the guitar solo in the instrumental break. Although I'm not totally head over heels on the track all around you, I just love the saxophone on the song. Brief picked guitar notes and again with the horns and string section, it leaves such a soothing vibe. The most somber instrumentation can be found on the song Oh Sarah, led entirely by the string section, opening up on a bass heavy sound before blending in picked violin strings with a gorgeous arrangement introduced later. A simple yet bright keyboard introduction two thirds in and the constant bass in the back, probably my favourite instrumentation piece on the whole album. And the closing track Call to Arms picks up where the album began, rolling waves and calling seagulls opening up the song before the guitars draw you in providing a constant energetic presence and along with the Wurlitzer, keyboard, piano, a great mix of melody, chords, horns, the come down in the final few moments before snapping back into action, it's a fantastic closer to a great project and that piano solo halfway through, hell, the piano in general on this track, it's like nectar. Personally, it's amazing to think that three of the best albums I've heard this year so far are country albums and all three released so close to one another. Although I think I prefer Joe Bonamassa's album just that little bit more than A Sailor's Guide to Earth, I won't deny that personally this was a great introduction to Sturgill Simpson and there's no doubt that this is a top 10 contender for best albums of 2016. Overall, I score this album an 87 out of 100. Yeah.